Hello, my name is Sean Bolin. I'm the training manager at New Horizons in Omaha, Nebraska. Today I'm going to talk to you about a PowerShell commandlet that lots of administrators trip over or get confused by, and that is the where object commandlet. When we're taking a look at the where object commandlet, the first thing to notice if you look at line one is the where object commandlet is a commandlet that we always use second in a pipeline sequence of commands. And I'll just run the first command to demonstrate what this does. You'll notice that when I run this particular command, I'm gonna get some output down here. And if we take a look at this command with, with respect to the where object, what I'm doing is I'm running a command, get dash process, that retrieves all of the running processes on this machine. I then pipe that output, all of the running process objects, over to the where object commandlet. Now we refer to where object as a filtering commandlet. What it's doing is it's taking all of those processes, all those process objects, and it's going through and it's gonna look at them and it's gonna decide, do I care about that particular process or not? Does it meet the criteria for me to display that? The syntax that follows where object, we have a filter script parameter, which I'll explain in just a second, and then we have psitem.vm greater than 100 meg megabytes. The effective output of this command is I'm retrieving all of my running processes, looking at each process, looking at its virtual memory usage, and I only want to display the processes that have at least 100 megabytes of virtual memory usage. If we look at the output window at the bottom and you take a look at the VM column, that's the fourth column over from the right, you'll notice that each one of those processes is using more than 100 megabytes of virtual memory. The where object commandlet gets confusing for administrators because we will see that there's several different syntax variations. It's not understanding what where object does that's confusing, it's how is it used. If you take a look at line three, line three is effectively going to do exactly the same thing as line one. I run my get process commandlet that retrieves all of the running processes on my machine. Each of them are objects. Notice, however, on the right-hand side of the pipe in line three, we've got a very different syntax over here. I have the command where. That is an alias. That's short for where object. I can type in where, and PowerShell knows, oh, you really mean where object. You will also know that I don't have to put that filter script in the curly brackets there. I can just put vm, which is the virtual memory property, dash ge greater than or equal to, and then 100 megabytes. Let me run this code just to prove to you that it works and does exactly the same thing that we did before. And I see exactly the same output, the same processes. Their virtual memory usage may have changed a little bit because the computer's running and processes always change their amount of virtual memory usage, but I really do have exactly the same output. So what changed between line one and line three? Really, we're just using a simplified syntax. Instead of having to type the filter script parameter, which really says, this is the filter that I'm going to utilize, I can simply put the property name, which in this case is the VM property, my comparison operator, greater than or equal to, and then the value that I want to filter on. I want to see processes that are using at least 100 megabytes of virtual memory. Same output, but a lot less typing. You can see, though, that if you didn't know what that syntax did in line three, it could be really confusing. If you were used to using or seeing the syntax in line one, and then all of a sudden you see that command in line three, you'll be, you'll be confused. And what the heck is that doing? I further simplified it one more time in line five. Notice in line five, I have PS. That's an alias as well. That's short for get process. I've got my pipes symbol, and then I put a question mark. Well, there's another alias. Remember, PowerShell can use aliases, which are just shortcut commands so I don't have to type in a big long command. Question mark means where object. So where object, virtual memory, greater than or equal to 100 megabytes. Once again, I will run that command and we will see that I'm gonna get exactly the same output. and there's my running processes. And as we can see, each of those running processes is using more than 100 megabytes of virtual memory. 
So now you might be thinking, well, is there an advantage? Is one better than the other? When should I use one of them? Well, most administrators are going to use the syntax that we see in line three. We, we kind of call that the simplified syntax. And as long as you're only looking at one property of an object, for instance, my virtual memory property, then I can use that simplified syntax. Whether you use the alias, where, or question mark, that's really just a personal choice, but I don't have to use that filter script and that curly bracket syntax. There is some scenarios, though, where we will want to utilize that more complex syntax. If you'll take a look at line seven. Line seven is a little bit more of a complex statement. I'm running get process again. I'm piping it over to my where statement or where object, but you'll notice in line seven now, I'm looking at two separate properties of the process objects. I'm looking to see if the process objects are using more than 100 megabytes of virtual memory, greater than or equal to 100 megabytes, and then I have another conditional operator on there. I have an and. And the process objects are using more than 10 percent CPU usage. Anytime you use a where object commandlet and you have a complex expression, you're looking at more than one property of an object, you must use the full syntax. I have to use the curly bracket and I have to utilize okay, the syntax where I have the property, dollar PS item is the object, placeholder, and comparing the properties to their values. So this is allowing me to do more than one comparison. I will go ahead and run this particular syntax for you. Let me clear my screen real quick. So if I run that particular set of code, we will see that I don't have very many processes where the CPU usage is greater than 10 and the virtual memory usage is greater than 100 megabytes use of that full where object syntax or using the curly brackets, remember that's going to be required if we are looking at more than one property of an object. If I'm just looking at one property, for instance virtual memory, then I get to use the simplified syntax as we have here in line three. One last example for you and that is line nine. I'm doing the same comparison that I did in line seven, looking at my process objects, greater than or equal to 100 megabytes of virtual memory usage and greater than 10 for CPU usage. But you'll notice I changed one thing. Instead of having dollar PS item in front of each property, I have dollar underscore. This is a change that Microsoft made beginning with PowerShell 3.0. In PowerShell 1.0 and PowerShell 2.0, this dollar underscore syntax that you see in line nine was the object placeholder variable. Each object that comes through the pipeline is held in that variable so we can look at its properties. So dollar underscore works in every version of PowerShell from 1.0 all the way up to the current PowerShell 5. Beginning with PowerShell 3.0, Microsoft introduced a new object placeholder variable and it was the dollar PS item variable that you see in line 7. Essentially what Microsoft did is that dollar underscore variable is kind of confusing to administrators. Nobody could remember what it meant. It's just a variable that holds the objects in the pipeline. Dollar PS item, by using that variable, it says, oh, this is a PowerShell item. Note that if I run the syntax that is in line nine, I'm gonna get exactly the same output because it's looking at the same objects. It's just a different variable, means the same thing, works the same way, you can utilize dollar underscore or dollar PS item and the output's not going to change. It's just a different variable. Remember that dollar PS item variable is only valid if you are running PowerShell 3 or later. If you can't remember or don't know what version of PowerShell you're running, just type in dollar PS version table and that will tell you what version of PowerShell you have installed on that machine, and you'll note on my machine I'm running PowerShell 4, it says PS version 4.0. As you've seen from the demonstration, the where object commandlet is a critical commandlet for an administrator to know. It allows us to filter out the data that we don't want and keep the data that we do want in a piped PowerShell commandlet. 
As you've also seen, the where object commandlet is extremely flexible. There's a couple different versions of the syntax that we can use depending upon how complex we need to make our where object statement. Hopefully you'll be able to utilize the where object commandlet in your PowerShell commands to get the output that you need to get. Thank you.